The fantasy story begins with the majestic continent of Shuangzhou, with thousands of sects on its western border. Those who have reached the pinnacle of cultivation in that world receive the power to control the sun and moon. A person who has attained such a high level of cultivation is called a celestial emperor. But the path of glory and power is very treacherous, and only one mistake is enough to send the soul to endless purgatory, where it will be imprisoned forever. At one point in that majestic sect, the guards shouted very loudly that they had found a deserter, and at that moment, in the main square, the father asked his son why he had provoked the god's sword sect, which was known for great cruelty. The father accused his son of committing very bad deeds, of seducing a disciple of that sect, then taking advantage of her, and finally killing her to cover his tracks. The father was incredibly angry, because what his son had done could have destroyed the reputation of their sect and tarnished it for many years. The son was very ashamed and did not know what to say. The son hit his head on the ground with all his might in shame, and he began to say that he was sorry because he had simply succumbed to the power of evil spirits, and he had recently returned from a campaign and could not hold back for long. When the father heard what his son had said, he slowly stood up and began to shake with anger, for he felt weak at his son's excuses. In an instant, he approached his son and struck him on the face with a very hard blow, saying that how dare his son make excuses. The son began to cry and said that he did not want to die. He asked his father to save him, that his father must save him. 11. The father said that he would send his son to another place where no one would know him, and in the sect where his son committed the crime, he will send a fake man to take the blame. As soon as he heard this good news, he was very happy and thankful to his father. After that, the father told him to get out of his sight and spend time alone within the sect, and not to cause any more problems. The son humbly thanked him and said he was leaving. The leader said that these were strange times, and that the great heavenly sword sect had become entangled in a net of deception. Meanwhile, it was a beautiful day in the sect in question, and it was situated on a high cliff and guarded by a great sword. In a moment, a bird appeared from the clouds and flew toward that sect. But as soon as she approached, the great sword instantly destroyed her. Many people gathered in that sect because they were to accompany a criminal who had done a terrible deed that day. They said that they had heard that the Holy Virgin would personally destroy the criminal to restore the honor of their sect. This was the sacred maiden, beautiful and strong, dressed in the best armor and wielding a special sword. In a moment, the gate opened sharply and the guards brought the criminal in. The guards shouted to report to the Holy Virgin that the criminal had been delivered. They wanted her to destroy him. In an instant, she pushed off the ground with great force. She waved her sword and a deep blue energy appeared around her, hovering in the air. She was very angry and said that he had committed the crime. The man was as if under hypnosis, just standing there looking at the ground and not answering anything. Then she swung her sword, which instantly became covered with special power, and said that she would now execute justice on him. The people who were there were amazed that the virgin would use the sacred sword against such a dirty criminal. A second later, a tremendous blow was flying at him, which would have crushed him to dust. Then he looked up, but his gaze was still as calm as possible. In an extraordinary moment, the chains that bound him were broken, and he raised one hand up and stopped that powerful blow with one finger. The holy maiden was shocked. She thought he was able to block her attack with one hand. One man started shouting, how dare that criminal resist? The other people were shocked that the criminal could block the powerful blow of the holy virgin. The next moment he spoke, he asked in a calm and uncertain voice where they were. This behavior irritated her even more, for she realized that he was embarrassing her in front of her people. She just started hysterically striking him with many blows to destroy him for sure. He was still as calm as possible and continued to block her blows. And he also repeated that he had asked a question. But the execution continued, and the maiden was more and more amazed, thinking that this could not be possible, for she was a great warrior and could do nothing against the one finger of the criminal. People from that sect were just in a stupor. They could never have imagined such a thing. In the next moment, one of the loyal soldiers began to shout, how dare this criminal disrespect their leader? He rushed to the attack, shouting that he would help destroy the insolent man and attacked him from behind. The man they were accusing began to get angry. At the same time, he was blocking the maiden's blow. He struck a strong counterstrike against the soldier who had attacked him from behind. The warrior flew away from him with great speed, and when he struck the wall, there was an explosion. His comrades were just shocked by what happened there. By that blow, the soldier just broke through the wall and disappeared. And that man said he was asking where they were again. No one gave him an answer, so he decided to act in a completely different way. But in an instant, something happened to him. He had a very sharp pain in his head and began to lose his balance. His eyes began to double, and the Holy Virgin did not understand what was happening to him. 
In an instant, she launched a swift attack and shouted that this was their chance to destroy that criminal. She activated a super ability and in an instant, special swords appeared around her. It was a powerful attacking technique. Then she shouted for her minions to join her and form a formation. In an instant, the soldiers all stood in formation with her and prepared to attack together. In a second, they all began to simultaneously strike him dozens of times and he could barely repel their attacks. At one point, the enemy decided to launch a massive mass attack. It was at that moment that he remembered everything. He recalled that he was in a majestic and very large palace that was located near the clouds. He was called the Celestial Emperor, and at that moment he thought of making a new breakthrough. His faithful girlfriend was with him all the time, accompanying him everywhere. She asked him whether he should take such a risk, since he had already achieved the highest heights. He thought that when he was the Heavenly Emperor, he could create the strongest sword in the world and in all the times of the world. But thousands of years passed, and the heart of that sword in his body did not move. So he activated a great power and said that his only chance was to do reclamation. He turned to the girl Sanyer and told her that she was protecting him, and if anyone came, let them destroy him. She humbly bowed her head and agreed with what he said. The next moment, he began to do a very large scale and powerful spell to move to another level. He threw a great sword into the mountain and everything was sewn. A special ringing sound filled the air, and the man's power was equal to that of the gods. Suddenly, he put his hand into his own chest, and through incredible pain, he pulled out a special ball that was in his body. Only the emperor could possess such a thing, and he said that Signor should take the place of the emperor for a while. She took the ball that glowed like the sun and said that it was the emperor's order. When he turned around, she smiled very wickedly and obviously had something in mind. In an instant, she used the incredible power she had been given and directed it at him. And with incredible power, a blow of pure energy simply tore his chest open. He was shocked, for he had not experienced any pain for thousands of years. And here it was that it would lead to death. With a great crash, he fell to the ground, and the special orbs that had previously surrounded his body were now in the circle of that girl, who said that she was now the heavenly emperor. He barely said that she had lived with him for more than a thousand years, but he did not understand what kind of person she was. She began to mock him and said that he, Lindau, couldn't even understand a human being. So how could he possibly rule the world with such a small brain? At that moment, she began to prepare the next powerful technique and said that she could not understand how a person who knew only martial arts could be so bold. A powerful red energy erupted from her attack, which was as strong as possible and like the sharpest arrows and energy pierced Lindau and Zener that his era was over. By this powerful attack, he was thrown from the sky and driven to the ground with great force. She said that from that day on, there would be no Lindau in the world, only Xinyer. But suddenly, there was an incredible explosion on the ground from below, and she was shocked as to why it happened. She dodged Liundao's unexpected attack and hysterically shouted, What is this? At that moment, he had already appeared before her, and he was like a true deity, with very long and extremely beautiful yellow threads coming from him. She asked him if he could really attain the level of the heart of the sword. But he no longer listened to her and began to prepare a counterattack. All he said was that she was not worthy of what he had entrusted to her. In the next moment, he made an attack that he had never made before. In that situation, he was to crush her to dust. The force of that blow was so powerful that it broke through the sky and began to reach the earth. And so it happened. Longdao put all the strength he had left into that blow. The colossal blow left a mark on the whole land. It was the strongest blow that the land had ever seen. Signor used all his strength to defend himself but it was not enough, and he slowly began to die. Lundo himself would also be badly hurt by that attack. Was he telling her that she had now realized his real power? When he looked at the hole in the sky, he said that the world could not withstand his sword-hearted power, and he had left his mark on the heavens forever. She was very badly wounded, but since he gave her the emperor's bullet, she had a chance to survive, and she said that she regretted very much that she had not been able to destroy him with her own hands. What Liundarao did to her, she was very angry. She was like a crazy, insane empress. Lindao's body simply began to dissolve, and only one eye remained. He said he would come for her. At that moment, in that battle, he sat down on the ground, and all the soldiers surrounded him and were on the alert. He regained consciousness and was fully aware of who he was. He did not lift a finger, but a special aura was created around him, which immediately began to knock down all the guards. Immediately afterward, he quickly waved his hand and used his other special power. All those men's swords began to fly away from them, and they could not control them, as if they were possessed by spirits. The sword of that saintly maiden was also like that, and she was shocked and did not know what to do. In a second, all the swords were near him, and they were in the air, 
She shouted at him angrily and asked him what he was doing and how dare he take control of the sacred sword of her sect. He said that he would like her to let him explain something very important. He said that all the swords in that world belonged to him. Everyone there, including the Holy Virgin herself, was shocked, thinking, who is this guy? When he picked up the main sacred sword, he said that it was only at the level of Huangze. Since he had such a fate, he decided to take it and improve it for her. In an instant, that sword shone as if it had just been in the furnace where it was forged. Lindau threw that sword up into the air, and all the swords began to float in the air, and fire energy burst forth around him. There was an incredible sound as dozens of swords began to unite with the sacred sword. Suddenly, a great dragon came out from behind Lindau, and he was the one who was to chew all those swords and refine the sacred sword. They were all even more amazed. They had never seen such power. They asked each other if the sacred sword would improve. That dragon was incredibly hot, and it was very difficult for us to be there. But the holy maiden thought that her sword was created by a distant ancestor of divine origin, and that it had already reached the maximum power of Huangze over hundreds of years. But now she began to feel that the sword began to radiate a completely different power, much stronger. When the dragon passed all these swords through his body and combined them with the sacred sword, the holy maiden felt that his strength increased to the level of Suan. After a few moments, that improved sword began to appear from the mouth of that dragon, and at that moment everything was filled with an extraordinary sound of leveling up. When the sword fully appeared, the holy maiden was astonished, thinking that its power was much greater than she had expected. When Lin Dao looked at it, he was surprised that the sword was so strong. In an instant, he jumped up and grabbed it and felt its incredible strength. When he landed, he said that he had decided that from that moment on, the sect would be under his command. Lin Dao asked the holy maiden if she minded, and she was shocked and could not answer. He stood up straight and said that if she did not mind, he would be the head of the sect. And at that moment, his energy combined with the energy of the sword, and everyone around him felt that fierce power. At one point, a powerful beam of energy burst forth in the sky, a sign that the sword's refinement and change of ownership were complete. All the people who were there were just stunned. They had never seen such a force. It was at that moment that the head of that sect felt that powerful energy and she thought that the holy virgin Jiminyu had made a very powerful breakthrough. In an instant, she moved to visit her. When she arrived in the main hall, there were many people there, and a man was sitting on the main throne. She was very surprised and asked him who he was. When she looked at him more closely, she saw his majestic sacred sword, and she could not detect his level of cultivation. She held her ground and did not act hastily. She said that her name was Lin Xuan, and she was the head of that divine sword sect. She asked him what brought him to their sect. On Lindau looked at her and said that she had a very beautiful name and also a very beautiful figure. She was about to get angry, but she restrained herself and asked him if he had decided to laugh at her. Lindau said that she had a very familiar aura to him, and her last name was also Len. He asked if she was somehow connected to Len Kienkyu. Were they all shocked that he thought that their head could be connected to Len Kienkyu? She said that his cultivation was very powerful, but he could not speak so brazenly about the elder of their sect. He was very surprised when he learned that Len Kayankyu had become an elder. He said he could not believe it had taken him so long to return. He remembered how strange that guy used to look. He was very weak and did not inspire any confidence. And now he has become a very strong warrior. Lindo would not have thought that this boy could achieve ascension. He sighed and decided to go ahead. He said that from that moment on, he would be the head of the God Sword sect and she could resign. She was furious. She started shouting that they didn't even know who he was. Their sect is very ancient. Its history has been passed down from generation to generation, and they are not going to give up so easily. In an instant, from her lush chest, she began to take out the majestic sword she wielded. She said that her sect would fight to the end, even if it was destroyed as a result. In a moment, he got up from his throne and took hold of his sword, and he said that she had a strong character. For that woman was preparing to strike with that great sword. But in a moment, he sat back and said with a smile that the descendants of Len Kiang Kyu were very powerful. He had not expected this from him. She was confused, but she knew she had to show no weakness. Suddenly, Lindau motioned for her to come over to him. She was very wary and wondered what the stranger was trying to tell her and what he wanted. She came up to him and listened to him carefully, and he explained to her slowly and clearly what he was offering. When he finished, she was in a stupor for a moment. He was so surprised. All the people in the Holy Virgin were even more shocked, wondering what he had said to her, for they had never seen their ruler in such a confused state. After a few moments, she agreed to his proposal. She proclaimed that from now on, Lindau was a new disciple of the God's sword sect.
All the people began to shout indignantly that they were against it and that they did not understand what was happening. Some time passed, and on that beautiful night, two people stood on the roof of a house and watched everything that was happening. Postcards were delivered to people, and they were very outraged because they said that Jiminyu, the holy virgin of the sword of God, and Lindau had fallen in love and would be married in three days. People could not believe that their sacred virgin was getting married. That man was most outraged because he had been trying to get that girl for a long time. And she was just like that, being expelled from another sect. He shouted that Lindau was now doomed, for he would hunt him down to restore his own honor. Lindau and his fiancée were on the roof of the house, watching the preparations for their wedding. She was a little disappointed because she thought her fiancée was nothing, and how could their head believe him? She recalled the moment when the head told her that Min was very lucky, because the man could lead their sect and become the most powerful man on the western border, and maybe on the entire continent. At that moment, Lindau told her not to worry, because that wedding was just a formality for him. He was not interested in women, because they only get in the way. He thought that a lot of time had passed, and that Vancière had probably become much more powerful. So he decided to start training and not show himself once again, and when he became stronger, he would take revenge on her. He also thought that Wang Seer would not realize that he could use his marriage to the daughter of the head of the God's Sword sect as a cover. He also thought that if his original sect found out that he had joined forces with such an influential sect after his expulsion, they would be very angry. Later, the head of the sect summoned the woman for an important conversation. It was the father of the guy who was left without a bride. He said that the wasp yogi and her daughter loved each other very much and they should be together and that unknown Lindau was definitely not worthy of her daughter. But suddenly a voice came from the back. It was Lindau, and he said that there was nothing in the world that he was not worthy of. No one noticed them coming in. No, it was a very big surprise for the negotiators. And his fiance was even more angry because he spoke of her as a mere thing. In an instant, the man turned around and began to shout, Who gave him the right to say such loud words? Lindau was a little tense because he was annoyed by those people. He said that for some reason it was very noisy. And immediately after he said that, the man received an invisible blow and was thrown back. All of his assistants stood there and did not dare to say a word, lest they suffer the same fate. Meanwhile, the head of the sect was calmly drinking tea and not paying attention to what was happening there. In an instant, she abruptly put the mug on the table and said that she was the head of the sect, and she just called those elders to keep them informed. Her decision is not subject to discussion, and she told them to leave her room. That man got up and said that in fact the force had decided everything. He was broken, but he realized that resistance there would not help him, so he said goodbye. When the man and his entourage left the hall of the head, the man's son was waiting for them. His father abruptly turned around and the son was surprised. He asked what had happened and if his father was injured. The father said that it was Lindau who did this to him, and he warned his son to stay away from him because his power was very great. The son asked, how could this be? And immediately afterward, he shouted that they could not allow Jim and you to stay with that barbarian. His father began to tell him that there was nothing but power in Lindau, and he was sure that in time that girl would become his son's wife, and then the sect would be theirs. Later, Lindau decided to recall the basics of cultivation. In that martial arts world, there are only nine levels of power. Everything starts with a beginner. The second level is conscious. The third is a master. The fourth is a legend. The fifth is spiritual. The sixth is immortal. The seventh is heavenly, the eighth is divine, and the ninth greatest level is that of the heavenly emperor. In order to become a martial artist, one must first develop physical fitness. This process is divided into three ETA, the development of blood and energy, the second is the development of bones and muscles, and the third is the development of the unity of energy and spirit. When the body has passed these three points, only then does a man become a beginner. The barrier is not impregnable. The sword is not just a weapon, but a way to the truth. The heart is the source of inner power. All the power that exists in the other world can be used by it for cultivation. The second level of awareness is divided into nine more levels, and now it is the seventh level. Speaking of power, no one on the level of awareness or on the second sub-level can hold out against it for even a second. He said that the head of the sect from which he was expelled, Xu Jiangsheng, was only at the fourth level of awareness. He said that if he had the honor of taking possession of that body, he would have to accept the revenge that body would have to take so that sect would be destroyed. He put on a new suit and went out into the streets of the sect where he was at the time. People began to pay attention to him and say that he was an outcast, and they wondered how such a ragul could interest their holy virgin. 
He walked there and thought that wherever he went, he was surrounded by fools. He noticed the treasury of the sect and thought it would be very interesting to see what the sect had. A man stopped him in a moment and said that only key disciples of the sect had access to the place, not people like that dog. And they also kept thinking, what did that holy maiden see in him? They kicked him out and told him to get out. And at that moment, Lindau was still in control. The one-eyed man then said that only the son of the Joe elder had the right to marry a sacred maiden and that the place was under the control of the Joe clan so no one would let him in. In an instant, a scream came from his back. He shouted that someone wanted to invade the sex treasury, which was guarded by his clan. He came up and began to say that he thought someone so brave had come to the gates of the treasury, but it was him, the outcast dog. With a crazy smile, he began to say that the circumstances were so fortunate because he wanted to take revenge on him for beating his father. Lindau asked him in a calm voice who he was. In an instant, that guy changed and looked like a demon and started saying that Lindau had stolen his bride and injured his father. This alarmed him a little. He had not seen such strong demonic energy in a long time. In the blink of an eye, that guy struck a very fast and lightning fast blow. He shouted that Lindau would not be able to avoid that fight. He was holding an extremely beautiful and large sword, and from that blow, Lindau flew very far away. It was a technique of secret sword skill. He was shocked that the guy had such strength. He even got a wound from that punch. It was as if the guy had gone mad, and in a moment, he was very close again, and like a madman, he was making another attack. In a second, he used the demonic soul destruction technique, combined with the black moon. Lindau could do nothing. That guy's friends were shocked at how hard he was beating Lindai. They said that at this rate, he would destroy him altogether. They need to report to the elder quickly. Joe continued to strike many blows, and with each blow, Lindau received new wounds. Joe could not stop. He felt that he was stronger and wanted to use that moment to destroy him forever. But in an instant, Lindau smiled and asked through the pain, did Joe really think he could win? Joe continued to rejoice like a madman, saying how dare that Lindwi say anything, for he was about to die from the great loss of blood. But suddenly, Lindau stood firmly on his feet and said that such wounds did not pose any threat to him and all his clothes were instantly torn. He smiled and said that Joe may not know it, but a master's body can be stronger than the sword itself. Ju did not understand. He said that Lindau was talking nonsense because the sword Gu Haodao wielded was a family relic of their clan, and that sword was at the level of Huang Jie. In an instant, something incredible happened. That outstanding sword just shattered into many pieces. Zhou was shocked. He asked how Lindau did that, but in a moment, Lengdao approached him and said in a really serious voice, that he had been saving for that suit for so long, and that impudent man had just ruined it. He demanded that Zhou quickly return all the money to him. In an instant, Lengdao made a precise and strong blow so that Zhou flew backwards. His comrades had not yet recovered from the fact that the family relic had been destroyed. Lingdao took the bag of jewelry from him and said that he was already so famous and he would earn more. After that, he took the pouch and simply went about his business, and Zhou could not calm down he rushed into the fight shouting that he would destroy it, but his friends stopped him because they saw how in an instant the majestic sword was destroyed. Lindau went into that treasury and said that there were quite a few different things there. He took one thing and looked at it closely, and then he said that he was very sorry that all those things were of a low grade. Then he noticed the second floor and thought that there might be things of higher quality there. There were more things there, but they were not much better than the ones at the bottom. Suddenly, someone appeared behind him and said in a hoarse voice that he was not allowed to take any things from that floor. Lindau said, who buys those things anyway? Maybe there's something more interesting out there. The old man was furious at what Lindau said. He shouted and told him to come down from heaven to earth. He came back and said that there were only inferior quality pills and he needed at least top quality pills. Could you not find top quality pills anywhere in the whole sect? The old man said that in his entire life, he had never seen a single pill like that. Lindau said in surprise that he did not think that the level of alchemy in that sect was so low. So, he said that he would make the pills himself. He went on to say that the old man had prepared him a thousand bundles of celestial heart, and he was giving him three days to prepare them. The old man was furious. He jumped up to strike him and teach him a lesson. He said that even the head of the sect does not allow himself to speak to him there. In an instant, Lindau turned abruptly and looked at that old man with a keen eye. It was as if the old man had encountered an invisible barrier that stopped him. Then he said to the old man that he now realized who he was dealing with. That old man was shocked, asking how that boy could reach the advanced level of cultivation. Suddenly, their conversation was interrupted by another person, a messenger, who said that he had found Lindau because he had an important message to deliver to him. 
he became very curious about what the message might be and began to read it carefully. As soon as he read the message, he was horrified. In an instant, like lightning, he rushed out of that building and went to that place as quickly as possible because the situation concerned his sister. It was the Valley of Death. It was a very terrible, smelly, and terrible place. But there were two men there. They looked very scary. One of them was small, and the other was twice as big. He was wearing a special mask. He said that Lindao was a mere fry, and Zhuiwan had hired them for a huge sum of money to deal with him. The girl was screaming for Lindao not to come to her defense. In an instant, the man caught her by the head and said that she was very beautiful. The man began to say to her that he would not kill her brother if she began to give him pleasure. The thug said that in their clan, they don't leave anyone alive. And he also said that the girl hadn't known a man yet, so he wanted to feel that special energy of such a girl. The smaller man disagreed with the big man, saying that all the girls he had done this to had turned into pigs. So he offered a deal. If he could destroy Lin Dao in three techniques, he would leave that girl with him. In a short time, very strong lightning began to strike in that city, and that smaller mercenary said that Lin Dao had already arrived. As he approached them, the mercenary began to say that the rain began to fall in honor of the death of Lin Dao. In an instant, he shouted that he did not think so. He thought that it was raining in honor of the destruction of those two bastards. Immediately after that, that smaller mercenary began to draw his sword and prepare to attack. He told Lin Dao not to throw around loud words. At that moment, Lin Dao concentrated. Because he didn't have a second chance, he noticed that the enemy began to advance. In a split second, an extremely fast attack was made, but Lin Dao was able to dodge it. The second mercenary was surprised, and the girl started shouting that Lin Dao should run away from that place, or they would destroy him. One mercenary said that he did not expect Lin Dao to be so fast. Mercenary one jumped up the mountain and began to use a combination technique. He took out a second sword and began to spin them to incredible speed. The second mercenary watched that battle closely, and he said that it would be the second such battle. Those swords began to glow like neon lights, spinning at a frantic speed. In an instant, he threw them at Lindau, and as he attacked, those swords split into several more pieces. They cut everything in their path. At first, they moved chaotically to confuse Lindau so that he could not predict at what point they would start attacking him. And at one moment, all those discs of swords came at him from all sides. It was unexpected. But Lindau put his hand out and blocked those discs. He said it was a very primitive technique. The power of those swords wanted to crush him but he was able to restrain them with his own sleeves. He realized that he could not simply stop them, and suddenly, he launched them at the one who had released them. That mercenary was shocked. It was a huge surprise for him. He could barely duck, but those flying circles still cut his clothes. That other mercenary was amazed that Lindau was able to repel such a powerful technique, but he was also able to redirect it at the enemy. But he was even more surprised at the customs because there was no one where Lindau was standing, and he wondered where he had gone. And a second later, the girl hanging from the string disappeared. Lindau used his own lightning speed and was able to free the girl so quickly that the thug didn't even notice him. It took him a few seconds to realize what had happened, and he was horrified at the incredible speed he had. Lindau held his sister in his arms and told her that she had better not take off the blindfold just yet, because now the most interesting thing will begin. He was determined to take revenge on those two mercenaries for the crime they committed. Suddenly, that first mercenary rushed into the attack with frantic speed. He was already very annoyed at how insolent Lindau was. And he had a fairly large arsenal of super techniques and used a technique with a sword. His sword started to clone, and he said that he was curious how Lindau would repel such an attack. In an instant, it moved and flew at him and his sister down the mountain at breakneck speed. It was the second superpowered technique. At first, he stood calmly, and in an instant, he suddenly opened his eyes and looked up. He could apply the techniques simply by the power of thought. A second before the blow was to be struck, a powerful energy burst out of him, took the form of a sword, and rushed toward the enemy. Lindau's strong defensive technique collided head-on with that mercenary's technique and blocked it. This mercenary was simply overwhelmed by the power that confronted him. He had never faced such a strong opponent before. In an instant, the Nyman could no longer resist and jumped away, but the power of Lindau was chasing him. That second mercenary thug was even more shocked at who he would have to fight. And suddenly there was a loud scream. The first mercenary was caught up in the attack and was badly wounded. But Lindau did not stop and again used the power of thought to use an attack to finish off that first mercenary. And when it was in the air, it was attacked by hundreds of lightning strikes, which were very deadly. The second mercenary stood there and could do nothing. The remains of his comrade just flew at him. He was in a stupor. After what he saw, he just started trembling with fear. He said, why the hell is that man so clean? It was an incredibly scary picture. 
So Lindau said that his sister did not take off the blindfold. That first mercenary just froze. He was as if alive, but he did not show any action. His whole body was pierced with thousands of small wounds. He was conscious. But now he will stand like this for the rest of his life because his body is simply paralyzed. Then Lindau turned to the second mercenary to tell him how he wanted to meet his own death. In an instant, the thug began to bow down before him and asked that Lindau not destroy him because if it were not for Shu Wang ordering them to do so, he would never have come near him. The mercenary also said that he could take him to Shu Wang and he would become a slave for Lindau. He was trembling and said that he was even ready to betray his own clan, but not to be killed. But suddenly he raised his head sharply and looked with his big red eye directly at Lindau. In an instant, he tore off his clothes and became even bigger than before, and he began to say that his clan would not forgive him for his betrayal. The clan would not let him do it. Lindau was even a little surprised to see that the second mercenary was now ready to fight, and he looked quite powerful. Suddenly, he was able to dodge a powerful and lightning-fast attack. That second mercenary changed completely. He looked like a monster. He radiated extremely strong energy, and he had a huge sword. In an instant, he roared so loudly that the roar went beyond that location. When my sister heard that furious roar, she was very scared and began to worry about her brother. Immediately afterwards, the demon mercenary struck with great speed, but Lindau was not at all afraid and added that he had yet to find such a bad swordsman. There was a tremendous explosion, a very strong blow, and the blue energy of that mercenary was raging around. My sister was already without a bandage. She saw that terrible situation. She was very scared because she thought her brother was dead. The demoniac mercenary began to shout that he wanted him to disappear from this world. So the mercenary suddenly began to swing again to strike even harder. He was putting all his strength into that blow. And his demonic nature was manifested at that moment. When the smoke cleared, something incredible happened, for it became clear that that furious blow had been stopped by Lindau's hand. From those frantic attacks, a large funnel formed around Luan Dao. He said that a little more and he would have to change his clothes again. He held that sword and said that the art of evil is special, but it exists only because of good. In a moment, he made a special movement, and that huge sword was shattered into pieces. And Lindau said that the mercenary had taken up the sword, but he had not even learned how to use it. And suddenly, he began to radiate strong energy, and he shouted that he would teach him how to use the sword properly. In a second, his movements created several energy swords, very large and extremely powerful. Although that mercenary demon was several times the size of the demon in Lindau, he had great fear in his eyes. When the extraordinary blows almost reached the mercenary, he said that it was simply impossible to possess such power, that an ordinary person could not have developed so much. The power of those golden swords was so destructive that they even destroyed the gonads that were in their path. That world had not seen such a force for a very long time, but the attack flew on and destroyed many more mountains on its way. After a while, they managed to get to the city. My sister was covered in wounds. She asked her brother to hold her tightly. And he thought that in his past life, his loved ones died in the war, so he never knew what love and family were. Suddenly, when they approached the gate, they were stopped by the guards. The guards said that they were not allowed to pass. Those guards said that according to the rules of the god sword sect, it is forbidden for unknown people to enter without permission. The sister looked up and asked her brother if her presence was causing him problems. At that moment, the situation began to escalate and the guards began to prepare for the rules they were following. Without emotion, Lindau simply began to use force and began to blow very hard from his mouth. As a result, a large tornado was formed from that breath, which captured all the guards and lifted them into the air. After that, they calmly entered the sect, and the guards just fell to the ground head first. Soon after, a very loud scream was heard in one of the sect's buildings, and they were discussing something very loudly. The guard came to the man and told him that Lindau had broken the rules of the sect. The man was immediately happy because the head of the sect had introduced the rule, and now no one would help Lindau. He ordered the guard to call his older brother to deal with the situation. He was in a very high spirits. At that time, Lindau put his sister on the bed and told her not to worry about anything and just to rest. From that day on, she would live with him. He told her to rest and left the room himself because he heard some noise outside. When Lindau went outside, he noticed that a large group of guards had gathered in that courtyard. The guard once again shouted that Lindau dared to break the sex rules and bring an outsider into the sex territory. So the guard turned to the big brothers in the penal department to make a decision. Lin Dao calmly said that he was there and was not running away, so those big brothers would have to try very hard to punish him. The man began to prepare for the fight and said that he was really fed up with Lin Dao. He rushed to the attack and said that he was going to catch that criminal. Leonui looked sharply at them and activated his own power. 
he was ready to repel their attacks. In a moment, the man who was running very sharply to attack received a very strong blow. It was very strange because it was not clear who had struck that blow. Those warriors said that Lindui was using some tricks again, so they decided to attack altogether. The guard, who had already encountered Lindau before, was furious and shouted that if Lindau was a real man, then let him fight normally and not use strange tricks. But he continued to sit there and said, do they want him to take out the sword? Let them not make him laugh. For those people are not worthy of his drawing the sword. He said they were barely worth one of his fingers. Those guards were very angry. They all started attacking at the same time to catch him. He realized that he had to show them the true power he possessed. In an instant, he made a lightning fast and very powerful strike. The energy was raging around him. He was very charged. The impact created an incredible blast wave, and it instantly threw all the guards who were there. Lindau said he gave them a chance, but they didn't take it. After a moment, he began to reduce the level of force and said that they had enough. But if it happened again, he would definitely destroy someone. Immediately afterwards, he entered the house and slammed the door. Those guards were just shocked. They did not know what to do now. They had only one option left, which was to call the elder for help. My sister heard the noise and said that they should leave so as not to cause him problems. He told her not to worry, for he was the husband of a holy virgin, and those clowns would not do anything to him. When she heard that, she was very surprised. She asked him if it was true. He said he was not lying to her. In a moment, she was very ashamed. This news was very exciting for her. Lun Yu smiled and asked her if she was okay. But she turned all red and started waving her head, hinting to him that something was wrong. Meanwhile, in the most terrible city in the world, in the clan of death, special events were taking place. The scouts came and reported to the head that an important mission had failed and that the elder and the student were missing. That head was a real demon. His skin was red. He was horrible. He said that usually they kill people. But that time it was the other way around. The intelligence officer went on to say that they had information that the strength of that Lindau was not at its maximum, but that it had incredible potential. After that, the head said that those scouts who were involved in that mission should have their heads cut off. They were immediately afraid when they heard this order, but they could not contradict it. In a moment, the demon leader told them to look intently into his eyes, and at that moment, fire appeared in his eyes. In a second, that fire was transferred to those scouts, and they all started burning. They were screaming with a non-human scream of pain. The head then told the fifth elder to be informed that if he failed the task, he would be punished. In a moment, that elder appeared in that hall. He was a strange, demonic creature. He asked why he had to do some bullshit again. The head said that the fifth elder should avenge their two men, that he should kill that Lingdao of the God's sword sect. That elder said that he had heard of him, that he had been sent by the celestial circle to die in the heavenly sword sect, but had ended up becoming the husband of a holy virgin. The head said that that sect was very protective of Lingdao and that they might have given him secret techniques, so let the fifth elder be careful. He said that all those he hunted could not escape from him and were crushed into powder. That fifth head possessed special power of movement, and he said that that Lindau was definitely a mere weakling. When the head was alone, he thought that when he heard the name Lindau, it reminded him of something, and he had a strange feeling. Meanwhile, in the God Circle sect, a scream was heard in one of the buildings. It was from that sect that Lindau was taken to the God Sword sect for execution. The guy who committed that crime was very angry. He was shouting that he knew that the clan of the dead could not be trusted. They said they would not lose, that there would be more of them, and now they failed the task. He was just furious that these mercenaries could not even wound him. His assistant calmed the boy down and told him that the clan of the dead had sent their best student to do the job. Now he needs to work to earn some money. He ordered his assistant to bring the girl, and the assistant was very eager to fulfill the order. He was salivating. A moment later, they opened the door and the assistant almost fell asleep from what was there. When he looked at her himself, he could hardly contain himself. Because she was a tall and beautiful girl, she was young and had a perfect body. The assistant said that he had to go and let the young man enjoy himself. The first thing he did was to remove the cloth from her mouth so that she could speak. She started crying even more and asked who he was and if he knew who her fiancé was. He was delighted. He thought it was even more interesting. He asked her who her fiancé was. She said through tears and whimpers that his name was Lindau. He was shocked. He had not expected this, that he had to deal with Lindau's trail even in such a case. He could not believe it and asked her if she was the same Lin Dao. When Lin is like a tree and Tao is like the road to light, she replied that it was true and that they had been bound by love since childhood and she would not let him destroy everything. The heavenly sword will not spare him if he does not let her go. Poor guy, he went through a whole group of emotions in an instant. 
from disappointment to acceptance. But suddenly he decided to untie her, and with one quick movement he freed her. Then he came up with a brilliant idea. He began to say that Lindau was like a brother to him, and he was very happy that he was okay. Then he began to tell her that she did not know that her Lingdao had betrayed their celestial circle sect and married a holy maiden from the god sword sect. He had also become even stronger, and he was still not succeeding, she said through tears, that her Lindao was not like that. He said that he was telling the truth and was ready to prove it to her. He was ready to take her to that sect so that she could see Lindao herself and ask him about the situation because he had to answer for his own actions. He was very pleased with his plan, and he also noticed that Lindao was a bastard Tomorrow, when they go to that sect, the girl will cause a scandal, and given Jim and Yu's hot temper, she will deprive him of his manhood on the spot. The next day, Lina Dao woke up and immediately noticed that his sister had disappeared. In fact, she got up early and started cooking breakfast. When he came, he was surprised that she was so bold. He said that such work in that house belonged to the workers. My sister was very surprised and asked where they got the workers. He said that he had completely forgotten about them and he decided to find them with the help of Jim and Yu. As soon as he opened the door, he heard a very loud scream. It was a man shouting Lindau's name. The man looked quite formidable, and he was very angry. The man said that Lindau was in very serious trouble. He said that the morning had just begun, and that the shouter was already blistering his eyes. And he told the shouter to leave him alone, because he had business to attend to in Jim and Yu. The ladies who were there immediately noticed that he spoke very strangely of the holy maiden as if she were his daughter. And they generally thought that Lindau was strange. And the man was even more angry, saying that Lindau was disrespectful to others and that he had hurt his brother. And when he brought a member of another sect, he showed that he did not care about the rules of their sect. That man started shouting loudly that Lindau was going to be executed. And Lindau thought that he just wanted to live there in peace for a while, but there will always be some people who are not happy with something. He started to say that he needed to choose which finger he wanted to use today, but suddenly a girl screamed from the back. She said that she was a maid of the Holy Virgin, and from that day on, she would serve him. She quickly walked over and asked that big man, his name was Elder Joyan, if he needed anything from Mr. Lindau. He continued to be angry, and then the maid said that it didn't matter, because he was expected in the discussion room, where the head and the Holy Virgin were present. Lindau said that he wanted to see the Holy Virgin. He was looking for her, so they decided not to waste time with Mr. Joyan and went to the Holy Maiden. He thought it was even better and he could report all of Lindau's crimes to the head at once. Meanwhile, there was a lot of noise in the discussion room, and only people's moans could be heard because of the pain. The head of the sect and her daughter were very surprised that things had turned out this way, and now they had to decide something. There was that group of guards who suffered from Lindau's actions. They were all injured and begged the head to protect them. A moment later, they entered the hall, and the assistant said to the head that she had brought Lindau. That man was also there, and he immediately started shouting and insisting that the head punish Lindau. Suddenly, that old man joined the scene of accusation, saying that he also had something to say about that stranger. But the head just laughed at them and said that they were very funny when they were so angry. Lindau saw that the head was on his side and began to laugh as well. And uh, right after that, he allowed himself to say that they had been training for so many years, but they were still very stupid. After that, the two of them could hardly restrain themselves from throwing themselves into one of those on Lindau, shouting that the impudent man wanted to die. Suddenly, the chairman spoke, asking the elders Zhou Yan and Mufei to calm down, for they would talk about their petty affairs later. Today, she had gathered them all for something else. But suddenly, a security guard returned to the meeting room with very urgent news. He began to say that there was a girl standing outside the gate saying very strange things. The head told him not to delay and to say everything at once. It was also a shock for that guard, but he said that the girl said she was Lindau's wife. It was a shock. All the people immediately started saying that he was a real scumbag and that one could not expect anything else from someone like him. In a moment, Lindau realized that it was his wife and he was shocked. Meanwhile, they were getting closer and closer and the man said before approaching that as soon as Lindau appeared, he would defend the girl's interests. Immediately, large and fast balls of energy began to approach them like arrows. This was the group that came to the meeting to understand the situation. Of course, Lindau himself was there, and he was very surprised to actually see a girl there, but someone else was blowing with her. He smiled and said that he was Sui Wang from the Heavenly Circle sect, and he welcomed everyone to the meeting. The head was very attentive because she also wanted to understand what was going on there. There was a visual battle between the two of them at once, as if they were ready to move on to real combat. In a moment, that Sui Wang came forward and said that the girl was Lindau's bride. He also continued that if the head of the Heavenly Sword sect had any comments or questions, 
He, as a man who has always been on the side of honor, would be happy to answer them. Lindau could not stop marveling at the absurdity of the situation. He looked at that girl and tried to memorize her. In a moment, he was very much surprised, for he could see in her that she had a very powerful, innate sword heart, and he had never met anyone like that in his entire past life. Had the world changed so much in such a short time? Also, the two elders could not stop rejoicing, thinking that they would finally see Lindau punished. But the girl began to say upset that if Lindau did not want to marry her, then the engagement should be broken off first. The head began to say that if the girl was really his fiance, what proof did she have? The girl said she had proof and pulled out a scroll. It said that Lindau's father swore that his son would marry Mr. Dugu's daughter and serve their family for the rest of his life. When he read that, he was mentally frightened and the chapter just started laughing after reading it. But the girl humbly began to tell me that her father had once helped the Lin family and that was why the agreement was signed. In an instant, that elder began to shout how bad Lindau was because he was already involved with another woman, but still wanted to marry the holy maiden. Did that nerve think he could come into their sect and do whatever he wanted? Immediately afterward, another elder began to shout that Mrs. Dugu should not worry because they would punish the insolent man in a moment. Immediately afterwards, an order was given to kill Lindau because he was being removed from his status as a man of the God's sword sect and was to be punished by death. The head immediately intervened and asked how long the elder had been authorized to give such orders. Those two elders were shocked at how that chapter defended itself for Lindau, even after such strong evidence. He began to say that he was the head of the disciplinary hall in their sect, and of course, he would follow the law. But if she really wanted to cover up for that impudent person and thus make a mockery of their sect, then he would not speak to anyone else. She thought that now she understood for sure that the two elders wanted to kill Lindau. Then Lindau began to say that he himself knew nothing about it, but that the contract was true. Immediately after these words, the elder shouted. He said that this was wonderful because he had confessed himself. Lindau decided to ask the Holy Virgin what she thought of the situation. She began to say that he had not signed the contract, so he was not guilty of anything, so he could forget about it. And as for Ms. Dugu, she could live in their sect for a while because, after all, it was their family business. All the soldiers and elders were even more astonished by this answer of the Holy Maiden. The red-haired man was also shocked, and he immediately asked if the Holy Virgin was surely not confused. She thanked Suyuan for his help, but they would take it from there. He began to ask Jiminya what Lin Dao had drugged her with that she decided to forgive him for such an act. And immediately afterward, he began to shout that he would not tolerate this, for he was a young master of the Celestial Circle sect, so he was perfect for that sacred princess, and his cultivation level was already that of a novice. He also said that Lin Dao was just a loser, and why was she so interested in him? She immediately changed and looked at him with a menacing look and told him to watch his words. And then she decided that he was not needed there at all and told him to get out of there. Lindau smiled and thought that Jim and Yu was on his side. He thought that she had probably already been told everything about him. In a moment, Lindau said, let Sui Wang stay for a while because he wanted to settle a matter with him. The Red Fox immediately started shouting that Lindau wanted to humiliate him. Then he began to say that he always conducts his own affairs from a position of reason, and he does not attack the weak and does not enmity people for no reason. He also began to say that Sui Wang and his father wanted to deceive him, and he did not plan to pay attention to that and take revenge on them. On. But suddenly Lin Dao said that the fact that they wanted to kill his kinswoman was completely different. He was shocked that Lin Dao started accusing him of this, and he started saying that Lin Dao was lying because in their world, enmity does not extend beyond the family. He was not going to listen to those excuses and shouted loudly for him to shut up. He was really angry and started saying that Sui Wang would pay for what he did. Those two elders said that Lin Dao was a real bastard and that he could not just kill the young master of the Heavenly Circle sect like that. The elder began to panic that the Holy Virgin had married an abnormal man and that such a union was a disgrace to their sect. But the head of the sect, as if she hadn't seen or heard anything, said that if Lin Dao wanted to kill him, he could do whatever he wanted. That elder was simply amazed by what was happening there. Did he begin to think that the head and her daughter were like a cow and a sheep? turning a blind eye to all the radical actions of Lindau. That Sui Wang changed in an instant. He started acting like a crazy person. He asked if Lindau was sure he wanted to kill him. He also said that the sect of the Sword of God is very good and that the Holy Virgin is also very good because they decided to humiliate him and his great sect of the Circle of God. Something strange began to happen to him. He said that they saw him as a spoiled boy. 
but they did not know that he was the first genius of the sword path in 300 years. Even the Chinyuan sect made an exception and accepted him as a disciple. In an instant, lightning energy began to appear near him, and he shouted that Lin Dao was taking out his own sword. He calmly replied that the Red Fox was not yet old enough to draw his own sword. Such bold phrases of Lin Dao's made him even angrier, and he became even more insane. In an instant, his strength increased dramatically, and energy copies of his sword appeared around him. He began to tell Lenda to go to hell and ask how things were going, because they had been waiting for him there for a long time. That girl was surprised when she saw that sword. She thought it was very unusual. In an instant, that Sui Wang threw himself into one, and those energy swords also began to attack Lin Dao. And Lin Dao himself stood there calmly and said, Is this the outstanding art of Qing Yuan's sword play? If so, it is very poor. He began to prepare his other finger to block that unfortunate attack. In an instant, he sharply raised his hand at the moment of the attack and blocked it. There was a very strong pop. Sui Wang shouted that Lin Dao should finally be destroyed because it was not worth living in that world. But through the great sparks, he had not yet seen that his attack had only touched one finger of Lin Dao. Suddenly, his sword was shattered into small pieces. He was shocked. He could not have expected this. He asked, how is this possible? But it didn't stop there because an incredibly powerful force emanated from Lin Dao's hand, like the sun, and it grew and slowly destroyed Sui Wan. The two elders were even more shocked because they could see the sword pressure in that power. It was a sacred technique that belonged to their sect. They were surprised that the head had already given all the energy of that technique to Lin Dao. That is why he was so confident. Then that elder began to tell Lin Dao directly to stop, for Sui Wang was a disciple of another sect. Sui Wang writhed in pain and said that Lin Dao could not kill him, and that he had already sent word to his brother and that he would soon arrive. The older elder turned to the head and said that it was not like that because she knew the sect. But she began to say that she didn't need to ask her opinion every time, because she believed in the relationship-building powers of that old elder. He was outraged and thought that this was nonsense because he was only the head of the prescription warehouse. But at one point, Su Wang just exploded into microparticles and was gone. That elder was shocked that this had actually happened and that he had dared to kill that guy from another sect. But Lin Dao immediately asked him if the old man had already prepared the herbs he had been instructed to prepare. And then Lin Dao began to say that that guy had dishonored a girl from the God Sword sect and framed him and the elders had not gotten justice. He began to say that what was the point of keeping those elders in that sect if they did not do justice? Everyone there was simply shocked by this statement, and for a moment there was complete silence. The elder, who was the oldest, could not stand Lin Dao's insolence. He began to shout that Lin Dao was a real bastard. He began to prepare an attack and said that this Lin Dao had already caused him a lot of problems. He rushed into one of them and shouted that he wanted to see Lin Dao destroyed, and Lin Dao just stood there calmly and waited. And suddenly, the head herself intervened in that conflict and pushed the old madman away. He was blinded. He started to say that they could not offend the God Circle sect, and that they should let him kill that Lin Dao and send his body as an apology, and maybe they would forgive them. But the head was determined. She began to say that she would figure out what to do, and it was not for him to decide the fate of their sect. At that moment, Lin Dao added that they should not mention the circle of heaven because it would make him sleepy. And suddenly something incredible happened. The old man started talking. That the head was a stupid pig, that she was so protective of that stranger that she was willing to sacrifice the entire sect for him. And immediately after that, he started to take out a big sword that was invisible behind his back. He said that he was not going to tolerate such nonsense. He began to say that their sect was falling into decline because of her female hands, because she dared to secretly hand over the sacred sword to Lin Dao. He said he was fed up with this shit, and that day he would purify their sect. Lin Dao was a little surprised. He did not expect that the old man could do such a thing, and he also realized that the old man was hiding his own power, and that is why he had aged so quickly. The head was very determined. She said she was giving the old man one last chance to repent and worship her. Zhumue sharply replied that he was not afraid of her, but on the contrary, she was ridiculous in his eyes. And she realized that there would definitely be a fight. She began to prepare a strong attack. In a moment, deep red energy began to appear around her. She was preparing to turn it into an attack. From that red energy, sharp energy knives began to appear as if from another dimension. The head was like an angel surrounded by incredible power. Those knives became larger and larger, and this technique was called the Kimendao Formation. 
In an instant, those red energy swords charged at the old man. At that moment, he sharply adopted a defensive technique and was preparing for a strong attack. But the head decided to reinforce the first technique and applied the second to the party, which was called blood for good. It was a very great power that old man surrounded himself with a protective barrier and kept him in great tension. Such a powerful attack lasted for some time, and the old man proved to be quite resilient, and it became clear that he could withstand those thousands of blades. And suddenly he managed to disperse those blades. Although they wounded him a little bit, he was still in pretty good shape. The Finn screamed that she couldn't beat him. 5 from 21. After that, he began to shout furiously that Chairman Ling Yushuang should die and free their sect from her folly. And she was upset and said that, unfortunately, nothing could be done with that elder and that he could not be corrected. But at one point, the old man started Lin Dao, and he immediately switched to it. He started preparing one of the strongest attacks. He was shouting that it was all because of him. At that moment, he made a fierce swing with his sword, and the sword was so powerful that it flew toward Lin Dao. He thought that the old man had made a great mistake in not obeying him. The moment he received the blow, he began to fly backward by inertia. He also said that the heavens gave birth to everything and the heavens endowed everything with mercy. So why did this old man decide to go against the heavens? At that important moment, Lin Dao snatched that sword from the old man's hands and struck dozens of lightning strikes in one second. The old man began to scream from his wounds and pain, and Lin Dao said, if he had attacked the head, his death would have been less painful. But the old elder decided to take up his sword against the master of heaven himself. As soon as that attack was over, there was nothing left of the old elder but his legs which were also slowly disappearing. The head calmly said that the precious lesson had been fully learned. Another elder fell to his knees and began to say that the priceless art of the sword of God, Kim and Dao, had been shown to the stranger in all its yogic colors, and he said that he would be ashamed of his actions. Suddenly, a boy started running toward them, shouting after the disappearing elder and calling him the fourth. This was the guy Lin Dao had already fought. He was kneeling in front of the disappearing elder, and Lin Dao said that he would finally be able to sleep properly. But at some point, the guy turned around and through the blood flowing from his eyes, started shouting that Lin Dao had repeatedly humiliated his family, and he vowed revenge. A little time passed, and the Zhou clan was in great mourning, with the entire local family gathered to honor the elder's memory. Suddenly, a large group of people appeared at the clan gate, and someone shouted that the head of their clan had arrived. That boy was shocked that his grandfather had come to them to support them in such a difficult time. He was a tall and handsome white-haired man, and he sharply told them to stop whining. He went on to say that the men of the Joe family stood up because it was not the time to shed tears, but the time to shed blood. In an instant, they all turned around and continued to bow, but to him, they told him to give them an order what they should do. He saw that things were really bad, and his power began to show in him. It was purple energy. Suddenly, there was a big tornado of that purple energy, and the head shouted for them all to stand up. He said how his descendants could show such great weakness. At 544, the young man was delighted because the technique his grandfather used was very powerful. It was called Qigong. He figured that his grandfather was able to reach the fourth innate level of strength. My grandfather said it was all true, and after many days of meditation, he finally realized something very important. And after this breakthrough, he was able to start mastering this secret talisman. He was very happy. He said that he was very happy for his grandfather and congratulated him. He went on to say that he already knew about the tragedy with the fourth elder, that the little girl Len Shuang thought she had grown wings and dared to harm the great Zhou clan. The guy also began to say that there was another Leng Dao and that since he joined their sect, there had not been a single day without some problems. Then that old man figured that there might be a special secret in Leng Dao. So he said that his grandson was going to the sect of the dead with a business proposal. The boy was a little scared at this suggestion. And he began to say that if his grandfather took the situation into his own hands, then Lian Dao would not be left in the lurch. The head began to say that if the clan of the dead took up the case, it would be clear that Lin Dao had no support. And if that sect loses and doesn't find out anything, then it has nothing to do with the Zhou clan. Then the guy finally realized everything and the head thought that his descendants were all dumber than each other. He felt that his grandfather could help him in another matter concerning Jim and Yu. But suddenly, the old man changed his look abruptly and told his grandson to come to him. In an instant, a strong punch was delivered to his face, and Grandpa said that that Zhulin guy had shamed him. He was very angry because it was a terrible shame to quarrel over a girl, and the whole deplorable situation with their clan was all because of him. Zhulin stood there and was very upset. 
And his grandfather continued to yell at him that he had much greater misfortune than some girl because he had lost a son, that the fourth son was a little clumsy, but he was still his own son. He began to cry even more and repent. If he had not wanted that girl, the fourth would have been alive. He admitted that it was all his fault. That head could not bear to see those tears and those whimpers. And he said that if Zolan whimpered again or shed a tear, he would be destroyed. He tried with all his might to stop crying, but he failed but he definitely stopped whimpering. Suddenly, the head began to hold out the amulet to him and said that Zolan had taken it. He took it immediately but asked if his grandfather would be angry with him. He told Zolan to do what he wanted, but the situation in that sect had to change. He also said that if that girl was the cause of all the trouble, he could try to use her. Zolan could not contain his joy at such a cool gift from the head of the clan. After a little while, a beautiful and peaceful night fell in the god's sword sect. The Holy Virgin could not sleep and decided to play a special melody on a special musical instrument. She had been preparing that melody for many years and wanted to practice it to perfection because she wanted to play it for Lin Dao. But suddenly, her beautiful melody was interrupted by a loud knock on the door. She immediately wondered who could possibly want to disturb her at this late hour. She came to the door and immediately asked who was there so late and dared to disturb her. When she opened the gate, she noticed that Jolin was standing there. He was smiling and began to tell her that the place was very beautiful that night. But in an instant, an extremely sharp knife stopped near his eye, and he did not even have time to react. She told him to quickly explain to her why he dared to follow her late at night if he did not tell her she would gouge out his eyes. He was caught off guard and began to tell her to wait because he had very important information. She was getting irritated and her energy was waking up. She told him to tell her quickly what he wanted and get out of there because she did not promise that she would not cut off his head. He began to say that his grandfather was able to find out that Lindau was a very interesting person and that he was very mysterious. And Jolin concluded that the Holy Virgin did not want to marry him, but was forced to do so by the head of the sect. He continued to say and looked at her breasts that he was not very talented, but he was training very hard and getting stronger, and he was just obsessed with the beauty of the Holy Virgin. He suggested that she leave everything behind and run away with him, and the two of them would be happy. But she was very much outraged by Jolin's words, and she jumped up the mountain and prepared to strike him a hard blow to teach him a lesson. In an instant, she made a powerful blow and shouted for him to get away from her. Jolin asked in an upset voice that she really wanted to kill him. In a moment, he turned around and said that she was very cruel, and he had something very strange on his body. She was shocked when she noticed what he had on his chest. She didn't understand what he came to her with. He turned around and said that she didn't even know what it was on his chest but it was the amulet his grandfather had given him, and it had grown into his body. She realized what he was up to, which was very terrible, and that he had mastered great power. She said that he would not succeed. But in the next moment, he struck her with a very powerful blow. His speed increased so much that she did not even have time to duck. That blow was very powerful. It flew very far back, and there was a very loud explosion from the collision with the wall. He began to talk like a madman, saying that he now had the power of the demon of their clan. And she had once said that if he defeated her, she would marry him. She said that she was not giving up yet and she would not let him beat her. And he kept attacking and shouting that she should play with him a little bit because he had wanted to for a long time, and especially what awaited him after his victory. Meanwhile, Lindau woke up and started to say, What's that noise? That Zolan felt real power and directly attacked the Holy Maiden, knowing that with the amulet he could defeat her with his bare hands. But suddenly, out of nowhere, he was hit right between the legs. It was an incredible pain. The precious items were likely to crack. While he was writhing in pain, Lindau said that it was no accident that he heard that noise and decided to expel that disgusting Jolin. He was writhing in pain and began to tell all the non sinitas in a delirious state that he was an outstanding master and so on. And then Lindau recognized him and he said that this guy was really very brave to attack a sacred maiden in the middle of the night like that. Because of Jolin's previous attack on the sacred maiden, they ended up in Lindau's bedroom, so he hit him. And Lindau's first wife asked who the guests were, but Lindau said they were not guests at all. In an instant, thanks to the amulet, he was able to quench that pain and rose up and became even stronger, preparing to launch a powerful attack. That demonic amulet gave him incredible power. It instantly created a very powerful impulse that he wanted to launch at Lindau. He was screaming for Lindau to finally disappear from his life. And in an instant, everything was surrounded by dark purple energy of demonic origin. And that demonic impulse turned into a huge skeleton head that was to destroy Lindau forever. But since he was at the level of the power of the gods, he simply raised his finger and the demonic attack stopped. That huge skull disappeared and everything turned into the energy that Lindau possessed. In an instant, 
Lindau struck a very powerful and invisible blow at that Jolin. And just as he was flying away from his attack, Lindau reached out his hand and the amulet was snatched from Jolin's chest. He quickly caught it and wondered where the attacker could have gotten such a thing. When he took a closer look, he realized that it was a very powerful amulet that made the wearer much stronger. This is the end of the story. We are waiting for updates. Thank you for watching. Leave your comments and be sure to subscribe to the channel, as well as point your fingers up if you liked it. I tried my best. Love you.